Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create a parry system similar like Sekiro. The system will allow the player to block and deflect the incoming enemy attack. If player press the block button within a parry time window, the player will parry the attack and reduce attacker's posture. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, since every game has unique mechanism. I will explain my approach to implementing a parry system and mention some related topics like uh, animation, context effect system briefly, and leave details in my future tutorial. By the end of this video, I hope you will have a general understanding of how to design and implement the block parry system in your own game. Before we start, let's first analyze what assets we need to put into the system. Here is a gameplay from Sekiro showing a typical combat. We can find the core components we need. Animations, blocking animations from adult block and the deflection animations. Visual effect when weapon impact and the audio feedback. For animations, you can use free resource from Mixomo, Paragon character animations or purchase assets from Fab to suit your need. Uh, in my case, I used the Ghost Samurai pack from Fab and refined animations in Cascader to fit my game's need. I created the visual effects a while ago by following different uh, Unreal tutorials. For sound, I'm currently using Sekiro's Impact Sound as a placeholder during my current prototype stage. Now, let's dive into the blueprint setup. I'm using the gameplay ability system, so my actor implements the gameplay ability interface and has an ability system component attached. This allows me to create multiple abilities and ground them to the ability system component. The component manages each ability's life cycle. In most cases, abilities do not directly communicate with the outside world. Instead, we're using functions like send gameplay event to actor to pass messages to the system. The event is identified by an event tag, while the event data structure carries additional parameters. The system then dispatches the event and its parameters to all granted abilities. Each ability checks the event tag and ignore or perform the response actions based on the received information. Here is an overview for how the block ability works. The ability is triggered when the player presses the block button, or triggers by AI behavior tree. Upon activation, it will play an animation montage to transfer from idle to blocking stance, changing locomotion animations from walking or running to blocking, waiting for block release event to finish the block ability, waiting for hit contact event to perform block or parry action. When a hit is detected, the system determines the appropriate response. If the attack lands within a deflect time window, the character performs a deflect animation with the corresponding visual effects and impact sounds. If the attack is outside the deflect window, a normal block animation is played with a different set of visual effects and impact sounds. If the attack is unblockable and outside the deflect window, the system forwards the hit data to the getting hit ability, allowing the character to take in damage and exist the block state. The ability ends when the player releases the block button or get hit by a strong attack, or may end it by a behavior tree. Once the ability ends, the locomotion animations transfer back from blocking to walking or running. Now let's add the nodes and the logic to make the system work. We start with an empty block ability. The abilities can be assigned either directly to the character or to the equipped weapon. It makes more sense for block parry to only be available when the character is holding a weapon. So I assigned this ability to my katana. In the player controller, I have added an input actions for blocking. When the block button is pressed, it sends an input block event tag to the controller actor. When the button is released, it sends a block release event. Back to the blocker ability, let's add the input block tag as the activation trigger and set the instancing policy to instanced per actor. 
With this initial setup, add the activate ability from event node to listening for incoming event to active the ability. Once become active, add the idle to block animation montage. Add wait game play event node to receive block release event. So once the player release the block button, we will finish the block state. Now, when I press the block button, the system plays the block animation. When I release the button, the block ability finish. But we noticed if the actor is in block state, it should keep block stance as an idle animation. And when moving, we should keep the actor holding the weapon. I'm using linked animation layer to control local motion animations. Animation layers serve as a predefined animation configurations, allowing me to switch between different local motion states. I have assigned the animation layer to weapon and linked it to gameplay tags for easy access. I have also created functions to retrieve the current weapon and query the required animation layer based on gameplay tags. I plan to cover animation layers and the equipment management system in more details in a future video. And now we can reset the animation layer back to its default state when the block ability ends. At this stage, we have a basic block ability fully implemented. Here is a quick demo of what we have achieved. When the block button is held, the player transitions from an idle to a block animation stance and enter the block locomotion animation state. Now, based on the idle to block animation, the block abilities need to detect the exact time window for parry. The system heavily relies on gameplay text to communicate with its timing. To allow in sending message, I create an animation state that marks the start and the end of the deflect window, using the send gameplay event to actor function to send an event message to indicate when the deflect window opens and closes. I created a custom target data struct in C++, which ensures the receivers know whether the event represents start or end of the state. Back to block ability, we need to listen for these animation events. The simplest approach is to use a wait gameplay event node, which listens for state change messages. My approach is to use a custom function called play montage and wait for event. This function like a standard play montage function, but allows event tags to be assigned. When an assigned event is detected during animation playback, it triggers a dedicate callback function, making it easier to execute the desired logic. I will provide more details in a future video for play montage and wait for event function. Then we can create a boolean in deflect range. Then the receiver function simply updates the boolean flag to true or false, indicating whether a parry action can be performed at any given moment during the block. Now we need to be able to receive damage. Here is a brief explain about damage detection in my game. When an actor swings a weapon, it performs a trace to detect the hit actor. If the detected actor does not belong into the same affiliation, the system sends damage information using the send gameplay event to actor node. The target data struct attached to this event contains hit and attacked information. This allows the receiving system to decide whether the attack is a strong attack, how much damage should be applied, if any special effect should be triggered. All the information will send to the target actor with the gameplay tags through gameplay event. Returning to the block ability, to waiting hit info, we add another wait gameplay event node to listen for damage events and create a custom event to process the received data.
in my game, getting hit is a separate ability. When the block ability is active, it prevents the getting hit ability from triggering. However, if the incoming attack occurring outside the deflect window and is a critical or unblockable attack, then the block ability will end and all hit data will be forward to the getting hit ability to process damage normally. So when getting strong attack and outside the parry window, even the actor is blocking, the hit will break, block and perform hit reaction. So now, if we are trying to hold block button, when receiving strong attack, the actor will get hit damage. For regular attacks be blocked, but outside the deflect range, the system will play a normal block animation, triggering visual and sound effects. The required effects are linked to the equipped weapon setup and can be retrieved using gameplay tags and context tags. It makes the correct impact visual effects and sound are spawned based on hit location. The context effect subsystem plays a key role in managing this effect dynamically. It's another bigger topic that I may cover in more details in a future video. So now, if the actor is blocking and receiving no more attack, the actor will block the hit. Now, let's finish the last bit for parry attacks. Since we have already covered all the necessary nodes, implementing this should be straightforward. I will store a reference for the attacking actor. When an attack lands within the deflect window, the system will let the actor facing the attacking enemy. triggering contact effect based on the attack type. Apply a brief hit stop to both the blocking and attacking actor to enhance impact effect. Add a camera shake to further emphasize the effect. Play different uh, animations depends on the strength of the attack. Normal attacks triggering standard deflect animation. Strong attacks will push the defender backward. To achieve this, I use motion warping applying controlled movement to the deflect animation to push that character back programmably.
with all the nodes in place. Now we can parry both normal and strong attack. Lastly, we need to notify the attacker when their attack gets deflected. In block ability, we just need to send another gameplay event and apply gameplay effect to the attacker. The attacker will using its attack ability to handle the deflector response. As this tutorial is focusing on block and parry, I may further explain the enemy reaction in another video. Now, when I parry the attack, the attacker will get a quick response animation. We have finished all the blueprint and have a basic block parry ability. I will give a quick run through as a summary for what we have achieved. The ability actives when the block button is pressed. The block animation starts, transitions from idle to block stance. The block ability continues until the player releases the block button, changing locomotion from walk run to blocking animation. The system listens for animation events to set the timing of the deflection. The system waits for any incoming damage to trigger a response. When getting hit, based on the attack type, the system reacts based on the flag checks. If in deflect range, perform a parry action. If outside the deflect range, if it's a strong attack, end the ability and forward the damage to other ability. If it's a normal attack, perform a normal block animation. The blueprints shown in this tutorial provide a high-level overview, and there are many topics worth exploring in more details in future videos, such as linked animation layers, equipment systems, and context effects. Due to time limits, I'm wrapping up this tutorial here, but I hope it gives you a solid foundation and a general understanding of how to implement a block parry system. You can adapt the concept and the techniques represented here to fit your own game. Thank you for watching and looking forward to see you in next tutorial.